Welcome back. I believe this will be episode four of the amateur radio radio trailer build. Um, this is going to be uh, this trailer will have a call sign simply by virtue of being D Star. Um, that's Kilo Foxtrot Zero Alpha Zulu Foxtrot. <laughs> Today I'm just going to cover some of the equipment that's going into this trailer and um, some brief synopsis on how that equipment is going to be configured or at least connected. Um, how I'm going to keep things safe inside the trailer and going down the road. Um, safe meaning more free from the elements and, and what's whatever is on the road. Um, not so much uh, secure as in security. but. Uh, I'll show you some of the equipment we're doing and then I will throw up some diagrams about how this is going to be connected as we go through this. Okay, so here's a quick schematic of what the trailer is going to look like. Uh, first piece of hardware we're going to have is the trusty Raspberry Pi. Uh, this one in particular is just a Raspberry Pi B+. It's what I have laying around and it seems to be working just fine. These things are little tanks. Uh, for some of the other wiring, I'll demonstrate in another video later on. Um, I did end up buying a breakout board, and um, we're going to just attach that guy right to the top there. Um, I know this is some really scientific uh, imagery here, but uh, bear with me. So that breakout board is going to just make it easier. It gives us some screw terminals to tie into that GPIO header uh, on, on the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to use that to control LEDs and uh, look for input on a couple of switches so that we know if somebody's trying to shut the trailer down so that the Raspberry Pi has time to shut things down. Um, uh, once we're done with that, we're gonna get some internet into this guy. Um, something I don't have on here is power for the Raspberry Pi. Power is kind of diagrammed on another thing we'll discuss later. So let's just assume this guy has power at this point. Um, so I've got a Verizon. USB 730L MiFi adapter and uh, we're going to plug that guy right into a USB port on the Raspberry Pi. So once we have the Raspberry Pi up and running now it's time to start getting our network uh, built out. We're leveraging the Unify or Ubiquiti Edge Router X and we're going to use him for all of our routing between DSTAR, Arden, TwinsLAN, Firewalling IP address assignments, all that other stuff. Um, again, these little switches are real little tanks. Um, I've got a number of them deployed um, in various environments, including my own home. So um, we got to get power to that guy. And so what we're going to leverage is just a, a real cheap um, PoE injector. It's a passive PoE injector. Um, basically, it takes whatever voltage you pump into it and it spits it out on the um, right pairs on the network. So what we've found is 12 volts is sufficient. Most of the Unify gear that you're going to see in here says it wants 24 volts, but it all operates just fine on 12 volts. Draws a little more current, but uh, we're well within specs and um, it works. means we don't have to step our voltage up from 12 to 24. So this passes through and then that Edge Router X, when it's configured for it, will pass um, voltage out that last port, the one with the gray border around it, out to whatever devices are further down the network. So getting to our more core network, um, our next thing is going to be a Unify Nano switch. So we're going to pass power out to it. Now this is a four port switch. It looks like three here. These are just weird heat sinks. This is a four port switch, so we're going to pass power in and out of the Edge Router X into this Nano switch, and then we have three ports here that we can pass power out. Um, the first thing we're going to pass power to that doesn't actually need it. First thing we're going to connect to the switch is our PTZ camera. Um, now this particular camera that I have is a 48 volt PoE camera or you can pass 12 volts DC directly into it through a barrel connector. That's what I'm opting to do because we're only pushing 12 volts into our PoE system here. So um, although that port is providing 12 volts, the camera does successfully ignore it and doesn't seem to cause it any problems. The next thing we're going to connect 
is our Twinslan Rocket M5. I couldn't find cute little uh, rabbit ear style antennas for this. I shouldn't say rabbit, rabbit ear, but they're kind of rubber dangly 5G antennas. That's what we have for this. I might end up upgrading that to this 13 dB antenna I have for our Arden network. Um, that thing's pretty massive. Um, it's about 18 inches long in total. Um, the, that's not quite to scale with that Rocket M5, but uh, that's going to be our Arden network. Both of those will run just fine off of that 12 volts that we're pushing out on the rest of that. Next is our setup for APRS. So we're going to use a little USB sound card plugged into our Raspberry Pi to listen to the audio and then also transmit on Vox um, through um, radio. So our radio, I've just got a Motorola GM300 as an example here. I haven't actually purchased a radio for APRS purposes yet. This is just a placeholder, if you will, um, for what we're going to do with that. Next, we're going to get our D-Start X. And uh, we're going to start off with the uh, IDRP2C, which is the repeater controller. And that repeater controller has a built-in four-port switch that we're going to connect our other repeater decks to. And that's going to include an IDRP2D, which is a digital 1.2 gigahertz module. And then we're going to plug it into an IDRP 4000V, which is the UHF D-Star voice module. All those, both of those are plugged into the switch into the back, and then we're plugging that switch into that Edge Router X so that the Raspberry Pi and IRC DDB is able to talk to those repeater decks um, over that network. Um, the next thing we need is an antenna. This is a Comet GP95. It's a triple band antenna, so it gets us the 1.2 gig, the 70 centimeter for our D Star, and VHF for our APRS radio. So, next we'll add in the 1.2 gigahertz antenna, our links. So, we're going to plug that into the IDRP2D, and we'll go to VHF for our radio. Add our VHF in there. And uh, then we're going to add our duplexer for UHF in. The duplexer is necessary because we're going to be both receiving and transmitting at the same time. So we need to separate those frequencies. And then we need to tie each of our two frequencies, our receive frequency, into the receive side of that duplexer. And then we need to tie the transmit side into the transmit side of that duplexer. And then there's just a single connection here at the center that goes out to this multiplexer and sends those antenna signals, sends those signals to and from the antenna itself on a single line. So then this is basically everything we have on the trailer. It's a lot of equipment. Um, and I'll draw a line here. This is going to separate what's going to actually be up on the tower and what's going to be inside the trailer. So when you look at this, we're really, and, and the yellow line is kind of sneaking in there just by virtue of what it is, but there's really only two lines running up to the top of the tower in this diagram. First off, you have this line going from our edge router X up to that nano switch, and then you have this antenna line going from our tri uh, multiplexer up to our tri-band antenna. This, ignore this yellow guy here, he's not actually going up to the top of that tower. Um, there is also going to be a power wire running up there for that camera, it's just not drawn on this diagram. So, hope that kind of explains what we're doing with the, kind of the big picture on this equipment and uh, what we're all doing with functionality. For the trailer. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'm happy to share further information about this project, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.